Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I have evidence of my impending breakthrough. Do you? I said, I have evidence of my impending breakthrough. Do you have evidence of your impending breakthrough? Let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. I said, let's talk about it and let's pray about it. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is the confidence in what we hope for, the evidence of things we cannot see. Let me go back to the original King James, because I know some of you are King James only, KJO. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What am I saying? I'm saying, I know, I know that I know that I know that I know that my breakthrough is at hand. How do I know that? What is my evidence? The evidence of my impending breakthrough is my faith. Come on, let that sink in. I said, the evidence of my impending breakthrough is my faith. Now, faith is the substance. The substance, it's sticky. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope sticks to the promise. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The, the amplified version calls it the title deed. You know what a title deed is? It's when you've got full ownership. You don't get the title deed to your house until it's paid off. How many know when your house is paid off, it's a breakthrough? The title deed, it means you own the breakthrough. The Amplified Classic says that the, the, the Amplified Bible says, now faith is the assurance, the title deed, the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what we cannot experience with the physical senses. Come on, I'm gonna read this prayer in a minute. I wanna, I wanna build your faith to have faith. Listen. Listen, the Passion Translation says, now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation we need to acquire the things we long for. Faith is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Faith is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Paul said it this way, it'll be just as the Lord told me it would be. He said, I believed that it would be just as the Lord told me it would be. And guess what happened? It was just as the Lord told him it would be. He had faith and faith brought in the breakthrough. The voice translation says, faith is the assurance of things you have hoped for. The absolute conviction that there are realities you have never seen. And the message Bible says this, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God. The fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we can't see, like the handle on a doorknob. Faith opens the door to the breakthrough. Kashabashi. The act of faith is what was distinguished at what distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. The first half of this broadcast was all about building your faith for breakthrough. The prophetic word the Lord released early in this broadcast was all about building your faith for breakthrough. So let me now ask you, do you yet have faith for breakthrough? Because that is all the evidence you need, your believing heart. So Father, would you help us today? You tell us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So help us today to find the promises in your word that we can stand on and not be moved from. Meditating on the word day and night, Joshua 1, 8. You shall meditate on the word day and night, being careful to do all that it says. Then you will have breakthrough. <laughs> then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. In other words, then you will have breakthrough. 
Father, help us not to read your word and then fail to do what it says. Deceiving ourselves. Help us, Lord, to find those scriptures, the yes and amen promises that are tucked neatly into your word. They're not even hidden. They're there for plain sight. We can read them in the holy scriptures, the promises of God. Yes and amen. 7,000 of them. Surely whatever kind of breakthrough we need is covered in the word of God or prophetic word of God. So help us, Lord, to keep our eyes on the word, to keep our eyes on the prize, to keep our eyes on the breakthrough and refuse to look around here, there and everywhere at all the circumstances that seem to defy our evidence. <laughs> That's called circumstantial evidence. Come on. So we have faith evidence and we have circumstantial evidence. You should have faith evidence. The enemy has circumstantial evidence. Come on, whose evidence are you going to believe? God's word is evidence. You put your faith on that word and you've got rock solid evidence that'll work in any spiritual court, the courts of heaven. It works. The enemy has circumstantial evidence. He's trying to show you things that move your faith, that steal your faith, that rob your faith. But your faith is your evidence and that's all you need. It doesn't matter what the enemy shows you. Listen, don't listen to the symptoms in your body. By his stripes, you're healed. Don't, don't listen to the threats of the enemy over your marriage. You will be reconciled. Have faith and act on the faith because faith without works is dead. Uh-oh, faith without works is dead being alone. Faith without works is dead being alone. So help us, Lord, increase our faith. Help us to do what we need to do to receive a greater measure of faith because you gave us the measure to start with. You got us started. You kickstarted our faith. It was, it was all you. You get the glory. You get the glory. You gave us that measure of faith, but you told us to grow it, that we should have faith, faith that can move mountains. We don't even need a lot of it. We just need pure faith, but you expect us to grow it. You expect us to do exploits. You expect us to battle the hordes of hell for that which you've called us to. You expect us to be the salt and light in the earth. You expect us. You have expectations on our life because you love us. And eternity is a long time, and there are eternal rewards waiting for us. So help us today, God, to stop allowing the enemy's circumstantial evidence to trump your evidence, the faith that you gave us, only believe. I heard the Lord say, only believe. So many of you just need to believe. I want to tell you a really quick story. This is going to help you today. I normally don't do this, but I'm going to tell a really, the Lord just remind, reminded me of this because of that scripture in the Amplified Version of the Bible, which I haven't read in years. Listen to me. This is really going to help you. Back in 2005, no, 2000, yeah, 2006. So back back in the early 2000s, I went to Nicaragua every summer to do missions work. Not the whole summer, but part of the summer. I went eight times. We went over to the native uh, indigenous people in the blue fields. We went to Managua, Leon, Masachapa. We planted a church there. And so I was really sold out into doing that. Now, one of the times before we left for our trip, I was just about to close on my first ever condo that I ever bought. Today, I own uh, four properties that are all debt free, but I was buying my first one and I had to get a loan. And so I went through this process and it was supposed to close before we went to Nicaragua, but it didn't close. And the Lord said, don't worry about it. You know, just go do my business. I'll take care of your business because I was considering canceling the trip because I needed to close on this. I had to move out of where I was, move into the other place, and I was gonna be gone a long time, and it just didn't make sense to my natural mind to leave without the closing. And the Lord said, you take care of my business, I'll take care of your business, so I did. Well, I was there carrying cameras, I was doing video work, and I was just exhausted, and I went up to the top of the Empajada La Paloma in Masachapa, and I was sitting there in the dark, exhausted, on the rocking chair. And I said, Lord, what am I gonna do about this, uh, this uh this issue with the because i had gotten a phone call and said the loan fell through the loan fell through so here i am i got no place to go back and live i got no place to get to deal with and 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 the loan fell through uh because of some illegal trading they were flipping and there was a law in florida that said you can't flip 
within six months and they were flippers. And so I couldn't get the loan. So I asked the Lord, I said, what am I supposed to do now? What do I do now? I got nowhere to go. I got nowhere to be. What am I going to do? And the Lord said, go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23, 10. God help me. Jeremiah 23, 10. You think I would remember that forever. Jeremiah 32, 10. Yep, here it is. Jeremiah 32, 10. The Lord said to me, I said, what do I do? The loan fell through. He said, go to Jeremiah 32, 10. And I, I didn't know what Jeremiah 32, 10 says. You probably don't either. But it said this, I signed and sealed the deed, had it witnessed and weighed out the silver on the scales. And the Lord said, it's done. I've taken care of it. So I finished my ministry work. I go back home. They tell me the loan fell through a second time while you were gone. We didn't want to disturb you. And I said, my God, what's going on? The guy who owned the, the property had actually let me move into it when I got back from Nicaragua because he knew it was his fault. So I'm living in this condo. It's not my condo. The loan fell through a second time. Then the loan fell through a third time. And then this Russian mafioso owner dude came over trying to get me out of the condo. And I'm praying. And I'm, I'm like getting stressed out. And God keeps telling me, I signed and sealed the deed, had it witnessed, and weighed out the silver on the scales. And I'm like, I, I mean, I'm getting stressed out. I'm like, I, I, I like I'm, I, I've never been through anything, anything like this before. I'm like literally warring for my promised land here. Finally, they got a loan to go through. And I listened to this. This is the kicker. This is, this is the end game. This is the breakthrough. Everybody listen, 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 listen closely. I went and sat at the closing table. You signed 15,000 papers. And at the very end, what they told me was the reason why the owner was so freaked out was because since he was going to be leaving the country himself, he already signed the title deed over to you. He had already signed the property over. It was already done. He had already given it to you. And he was concerned that because uh, the loan fell through the third time, he was freaking out because he thought, well, I'd already gave her the property. I'm going to be out a quarter of a million dollars. Are you following me? What I'm saying is, is that God had told me in Nicaragua that he had already signed and sealed the deed. He was telling me it was a done deal. Not only that, but I got a whole bunch of cash money for all the trouble that I was caused. And what does the Bible say? The Bible says an amplified Bible, Hebrew 11, 1. Now faith is the assurance. It's the title deed. So my faith, even though I had to fight the good fight of faith, my faith was my title deed. And in reality, I really actually had a title deed and I got that property and now I have four properties because I understand how to fight for properties. And I just want to pray a special prayer, especially for those who are trying to deal with uh, new properties, business properties, um, uh, house properties, leases. We talked about that yesterday. I want to pray for you today uh, because I, I know many of you, the enemy is just fighting you, right? So Father, in the name of Jesus. Some of you, you got so much debt on your property that it's, your, it's a struggle. I want to pray for that too. I pray with everything related to properties, whether you're trying to get one, you got one you can't afford, you, you got a leasing issue, you're trying to buy a church building. Are you following me? Can I pray that? Can I pray that? If I can pray that, say amen. Father, the name of Jesus, I just lift up all of those right now who are struggling in the realm of property, who are trying to get a property, trying to finance a property, trying to get a church property, a business property, some kind of orphanage or, or, or just can't pay the mortgage that they have because of the, the issues of the earth that have occurred uh, in this last year and the unemployment and all of these things, God. I'm asking you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to intervene, to bring a breakthrough on their behalf right now. God, I'm asking you, even in the next 30 days to just work miracles, cancel student loans that are causing bad credit, do whatever you have to do to bring some relief to your people, to bring a breakthrough to your people in Jesus name. I decree and declare in Jesus name that whatever properties we're supposed to have, live in, buy, sell, lease, rent or rehabilitate are going to be uh, accomplished by your spirit, by your favor in Jesus name. I thank you, Lord, for that in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for that. All those that are trying to recover from bankruptcy and can't get uh, a loan, they can't get any help because, Lord, I just ask you to make a way out of no way and help us to be good stewards of what you put in our hands in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Hey, come on now. 
Some of you might want to sow a seed into that today. You know, I don't usually tell you uh, much about sowing, but today would be a good day to sow if you have the heart to do it. And I own four properties now and um, they're all debt free. I didn't start out that way. It was that first battle for that first condo that paved the way for me to be a property owner. And I leased two of them. Uh, uh, some other people are living in one and I'm living in one. And uh, it's really has uh, brought wealth to my household because, because the fastest way to wealth is to be debt free. So now I'm debt free and I have these properties and passive income. And I just, if you feel led today, you want to sow a seed into that. You're saying, this is what this is. I can put my faith on that. Do it. Uh, it and what I want you to do is sow into the missions so that we can break into South America and build our facilities to help children and uh, poor people uh, to hear the gospel and to restore their lives. Okay. That's what I want you to sow into. This is not for Jennifer. This is for the missions. And so go over there and do that if you feel led to. If you don't feel led to, don't do it. Amen. You know, I do this prayer broadcast every day for eight years. It's freely I give. Amen. Freely I give. But if you want to get in on that, you want to sow into that and help us to build that in, uh, in Latin America as we are praying about the strategy, go ahead and do that. JenniferLeClaire.org slash missions. Amen. God is good. And if you can't use that, if you don't want to, if you are, well, I just want to use my Venmo or I just want to use my PayPal, you can do that. I'm going to tell you real quick how to do that before we uh, switch gears here. That's right, Arlene Brown. Missions. Missions. It's called Operation Liberation. Operation Liberation. We're setting captives free, liberating nations. We're going to do our part. We do dig well, uh, we do work with organizations that dig water wells in Africa and do a bunch of stuff. We have our own missions too. You can do paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the Venmo. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the text to give. Text the word pray to 7547017. Uh, you can use the PO box. PO Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. And Father, I just bless every seed sown today in Jesus' name. Those of you listening to me for the first time know that I, I barely ever do this. I always give you an opportunity to give, but I barely ever tell you it's going to be a good day to sow. But only, you know, when you sow is when your faith is high. That's when you sow. That's when you sow is when you feel faith. Don't, don't just sow because some dumb prophet on Clubhouse tells you to sow. They're just stealing your money. When you sow into a false prophet, you're not getting any reward from that because you sowed into a dead ground. And God expected you to discern it and you just wasted his money. Now, he's good. He loves you. He'll help you. But, but it's not good. There's so many false prophets on social media. And I see some of you following them and sowing into them. I'm like, dear God, help them. Jesus. Amen. God, hello, Dolores. God is good. Dolores, Dolores, Shada Babashi. God is good all the time. Make sure you're with us on Sunday for the Pentecost service. Tongues of fire is going to be off the charts. Baptisms of fire, healing, deliverance. I don't even know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be good because I've got a word. I'm going to share a short word. We're going to spend most of our time actually praying for you. You can watch that online, but you have to register at jenniferleclair.org slash events. Tongues of fire. Go over there and get registered for that. Go over there and get registered for that. And while you're there, you can register for later today. There's going to be um, a new webinar that's going up a free webinar so look for it later today or if you're signed up for our eventbrite stuff in the past it'll, it should come to you about uh, supernatural keys for intercession for revival that's not up yet because i was waiting for confirmation i've got a special guest uh with me over there and you can also sign up for the mid-year prophetic update the mid-year prophetic update 2021 mid-year prophetic update. You can say you can come in person or you can watch online. You'll get the link to be able to uh, to do that. Wow, wow, wow. I just saw a major 
opportunity here. My goodness. Shorter da ba 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 she. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. God is so good. Help me, Lord. Sometimes I get so many ideas and opportunities, I don't even know what to do with them. I just got, got to start giving them to other people. Amen. God is good all the time. I'm trying to find find your comments here. I got off the tab and God is good all the time. Amen. Some of you are so funny. You crack me up. Some of you make such inappropriate comments. <laughs> I imagine that's because you've got demons or else your mother didn't teach you better. But God is good. He wants to deliver you. We do have deliverance ministry at Awakening House of Prayer. We sure do. We have deliverance ministry at Awakening House of Prayer. You have to come to South Florida, though, because we don't do it online. And there's good reasons for that. I'm not against people who, that do that online. Um, I'm just not yet comfortable doing that online. Most of the time. God is good. Barbara, you must be seeing some of these goofy people. I had to block one of them. There was some kind of scam artist. He kept saying, hello, welcome to the new millennium. Uh, he said that about you know 50 times and I finally blocked him. <laughs> people are so goofy. Goofy, goofy, goofy. Remember, Judy said, Judy Murdy says, I've been receiving 100 full returns from giving into Awakening House of Prayer. Well, praise God, Judy. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> 